Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Today on Doodle Draw Art, I'm doing a viewer request for a fountain. So what we're going to do is start off by drawing some ovals. I'm going to draw a large oval um, most of the way down my page, just right here. And this oval is um, pretty flat. It's really wide and not very high. Then I'm going to draw another oval that's smaller than this one and just a bit higher. And then I'll draw a third one that's even smaller still, right here. These are going to be the three bowls of my fountain, and I'm going to add details to these as I go. Now there also could be some sort of feature up here at the top of the fountain that gives it um, an interesting shape at the top. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and um, design the shapes in my fountain. So this very top one is the smallest. I'm going to make a lip on the fountain. So I'm going to go straight across and then down over the edge of the lip like this. And then I'm just going to make ripples that go across from one side to the other. And then I'm going to make the bowl of the fountain. So here it's going to go just in at the bottom a bit like this. And then I'll make um, We'll go straight across through here. Then I'll make the support. So I think it's a good idea actually to decide where the middle is and just make a line straight down my page. This way I can keep my proportions um, centered and make sure that my, my pillars down the middle are all lined up. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to make some decorations on my post and then I'll draw the support that's coming down into the next fountain down. So you'll see I'm making these lines go further than my uh, back of my oval. So what's going to happen now is the back of my fountain is going to be coming around this way and then around here and I'm going to make this tighter oval. So I'm too short to see into the top of this uh, bowl but for this one I can see a little bit inside the water fountain area. But now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make my edges come over to the side like this. And you'll see on this one, I just came straight out from the corner and down. But on this one, I went around the back of my oval so that right in here you can see a little bit of the three-dimensional curve of this bowl. But then it's the same thing. I'm just going to make these ripples going across. So they're going to come down like this and make their way around. Like so. So now I'll do the same thing I did here, which is make the bowl on this fountain. So it's going to come out from underneath, curve out to the sides a little bit on both sides, trying to make it proportional towards the middle. And then I'll make the bottom of the bowl coming in like this. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing I did up here, which is I'm going to make a little bit of a design holding up this fountain, and then I'm going to make the pedestal that holds it uh, together. So in this case, you can see now that this particular uh, pedestal is visible in more of this back end of the bowl. So when I make my next oval, you couldn't see an oval here at all. You could see a very thin oval here. And now for this one, it's going to make um, a much more relaxed oval shape. So this is my largest bottom bowl. And from here, I'm actually going to be able to see the interesting design around this back edge a little bit because from where I'm standing, I'm seeing into this front bowl a little bit. So now when I do this part, I'm actually going to come out around a little further here. So I see this side dimension coming from the side and then I'm just going to bring all of my decorative edges around here like so. Same thing on this side. I'm just going to come out a little bit around here to give a bit of dimension on this side as well. Okay, so now I need to draw the, the bottom bowl and it's just the same idea. Just going to curve under here. This one will probably, because it's closer to us and we see in it better, we're not going to have it as um, as deep as these other two where we're looking more up at these ones. So it's going to appear to be a little bit more shallow, even though it's the largest of all the bowls. And across I'll go. 
And then from here, we'll draw the support under this one. Same idea as this, just a couple of um, ridges. And then we'll put the pedestal base down here, something like this. And from here, it's going to have just a bit of a of a curve on the bottom, something substantial to hold it all up. So this is the basic outline of my fountain and now what I want to do is add a little bit more uh, detail because this you could stay here and keep it very plain or you could become a little fancier. So up at this very top section these are sketch marks that are not part of my drawing. I'm just going to erase those a little bit so they're not in the way. Um, what we can do is start to add some decorations to our fountain. So I'm going to make each of these bowls have sort of like pumpkin ridges on them so that they look like they've got three-dimensional sections in them. And we'll do the same thing here. Now you don't have to erase these lines. You could erase them when you're completely finished your work, but I'm just going to erase them as I go here so you can see a little bit what I'm doing. And again, just make on the second fountain down, the, the details are a little bit bigger, so you'll just make your, your pumpkin shapes a little bit wider than before. All right, and then the same thing on the bottom one. And for these ones, I'll just make a little bit of curves around the edge. Every time I get close to this center line, I try to make my curve less, and as I go towards these edges, I make my curve more, because that's just the way we'll see it uh, with our eye. Okay, and then we can add detail in these pillar sections. And so um, the reference picture that I'm looking at has sort of a pineapple on the top here. So I'll do something like that too here. It's got a, some sort of a fancy top piece with pineapple cross, crisscrosses up there. And then on these ones, it looks more like a leaf. So I'll make this shape going down with some leaf lines coming in here and then you can't really see what's going on on these other edges and then for this one it has like a, a bigger more ornate leaf so it sort of has the stem like this and then some fancy edges coming around like this and they have lines coming towards each one like so and you can't really see all of this other one you just get the hint of it coming down from these other sides like that. All right, and then we've got the big bottom base, and they've sort of got um, another version of the same thing. So we'll have a circle here with big solid leaf um, stem, and then it'll just be sort of this fingers of leaf direction here coming this way. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is an old, old fountain, so it's got a very, you know, ancient look about it. It could be a little bit damaged. And then even here there's something extra, like a little bit of extra detail or filigree, I don't know. Just not really anything much. And then you can sort of get a hint again over here of the same thing happening, but you can't really see it. So it's just going to be um, added detail on the side. And the same thing over here. I'm just going to see a few of these edges of the fountain. Uh, the detail. And then we're just going to make the line that goes across this way that shows where the pedestal base is finished. Like so. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is um, I finished all my sketch lines. I'm going to use ink. I'm going to go over it with my ink pen. And when I'm doing this, I'm going to look for all of the lines that make this really uh, pop out. So I don't have to, I'm going to use watercolors on this because I think that will make it look really cool. Um, but you don't have to do every single line. Um, it's a sketch. So you're going to make it um, a little bit careless even when you make these lines. You can just pull your pencil in a way that doesn't make it look like you tried too hard. So I'm just more or less floating along these lines that I drew before and I'm not worrying too much if they are perfect. You know, if I'm drawing um, a cartoon character, I try really hard to make all of my lines perfect because the dimensions are what make my character um, look like the character. The actual shapes of their 
of their features. If I'm not careful, it won't look right. But in this case, what I'm doing is a sketch. And I want it to have a very, um, what's the word? Casual appearance. I don't want it to look like I tried too hard. So I'm just floating my lines over the top here. Hopefully my hand is not in the way of this pen, but you'll see here. I might just finish this in time lapse. You don't need to hear me chat on. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is just clean up all my pencil lines by erasing these out and then I'm going to go back with my marker, with my Sharpie, and add a little bit of shadowing and texture to my picture. So I'll just get these off. This is one of my favorite things about drawing is revealing the, um, the, the lines that I have created from my sketches. All right, so there I have erased all of my pencil lines, pretty much, and I'm gonna go back with my marker, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add shadows. So underneath here, um, there's the, this lip edge of the fountain, makes it hard to see what's under here. So what I'm drawing is just little tiny lines that are filling in the space underneath there to show that there's a shadow casting on this bowl. And then what I'm also going to do here at the bottom is pull lines in towards the middle that make it look darker across the bottom of the bowl because again the light is coming from above and it's giving me a bit of a shadow down here. Now I'll do the same thing up at the top section here. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on the bowl just underneath these little V shapes that I've drawn and I'm going to add some shadow underneath the bowl and you can also thicken up your lines that are coming from the bottom here just the little edges that are at the bottom add a little bit more marker just to make it look um, darker so then up here I can do the same thing just add a little bit of shadow that's coming from this pineapple and I could even do a little bit of shadow underneath here at the same time. And now I can add um, some detail on the edges of this just to show that there's something going on here. Now I'll move down to the next one. I'm going to do the same thing that I did up above which is just to thicken up just the bottom edges of these dimensional lines. You can thicken up a little bit at the top as well because that's showing some of the shadow from above. And I'll add a little bit of detail just in here. And there's going to be water actually in this bowl. So if you want to make some lines showing that there's water filling it up, you could just draw just tiny little lines up there. All right, down to the next one. I'm going to make my shadow underneath here coming down from the ridge. And just underneath, trying not to get any of these lines on the actual rim. They're all just on the bowl below. Pulling those down and also making some really nice dark shadows down here. The closer together your lines are, the more it will look like a shadow. Alright, so I'm finished with all my detail and now I'm going to paint my fountain. I've just got my children's watercolor set and I'm working today with an aqua brush. And an aqua brush is kind of cool because it has water actually inside the brush. So what I'm going to do is choose my colors for this fountain. and I want it to look metallic so I'm going to choose some of these, probably this nice dark brownish color. But I also want it to have a bit of a reflection um, of of light. So I'll probably also work with just this light color here. So I'm going to start off with water on these two. I'm just squeezing some on from my brush. And then I'm also going to want um, something for the water. So maybe something like this nice pale blue and maybe a little darker blue. Okay, so I've just pushed on my brush here and dropped the water on and I have a cloth for cleaning my brush off in between. So what I'll do first is I'm going to just float some color 
fighting with this. Here we go. I'm just going to float some color on to show a little bit of highlight. So I'm going to grab this, this color here, this lightish beige, and I'm just going to add a bit of, a bit of a light beige float of color here on the bottom of this one, and another float of light beige here on the bottom of this one. And then I'm going to use this lighter brown or darker brown, and I'm going to try not to put too much color on, so I'm actually going to mix it, dilute it down into a runny water. So all I've done is taken a little bit of color here and added more water to the color to thin it down. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to I'm going to be really messy because this watercolors and I think the cool thing about it is that you don't make it look too much like you've painted it, but more like you've just hinted at the color. So I'm just going to really like quickly smear it on there and get it really wet with paint, but very uneven. So the unevenness of these watercolors is what's going to make this seem very uh, textured and realistic. So there I go, and I'll come into this area here underneath the bowl. I'm not going to try to cover the whole entire area. That would ruin the, um, the watercolor effect. I'm just going to hint at this color by running it all over the all over the bowl with the water blending it a little bit more as we go. And I think maybe I'll put my water in right away. As you notice, there's no water yet. So I'm just going to clean my brush off here, and I'm going to indicate some water sort of spilling over from these side edges. So again, I want to work with really wet, thin paint. And I'm just going to float this water down from my down from my upper level into my lower level. So I'm coming straight down here, so I'm coming off to the side here. It's just trickling over and then landing down in the next level. And I'll do the same thing from this one. It's going to trickle over the edge into my fountain. And it's trickling over the edge in many places here, dripping its way down into the next level. This is what makes a fountain so pretty. And maybe there's some coming from behind on the other side of the bowl that we can't really see the front side of it. So that's interesting too. And then if you like, you can um, get a little bit of the darker blue and just enhance, maybe that's too much paint, just enhance your blues with some more color just to pop it out a little bit on a few here and there. So I hope my um, my request is meeting your favor. This is what you were hoping for when you asked for a fountain. Um, I'm going to add some water in here now, some blue water, making it look like it's landing in the blue. But I'm not really going to do a solid much blue. It's just the hint that there's water in there. And this one's actually full of water, so I'll bring it to the edges. But that's where I'll stop. And you, I might even put some brown over top of that just to show the shadows from the... Um, from the inside. So again, I'm grabbing my watery brown, not too much color at all. And I'm just going to fill in some of these dark areas here. Again, not worrying too much about getting all of the area covered. Just an indication of some color through here. This has been a really fun request for me. I've enjoyed painting it for you. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And I'm sure that uh, if you have something that you would like to draw, I would probably like to draw that too. So just as my uh, my Instagram fan has requested for me to draw for this for you today, you could request something else, and then we could all enjoy it. All right, so I'm going to stop there. And as you can see, there's definitely areas that I did not paint. And I think that's that's kind of the joy of watercolors, is that you give it, uh, you give it life by leaving it out some of the painted areas. All right, so thanks for watching. Please comment below if there's something that you'd like for me to draw, and I would love it if you would like this video, and of course subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.